oh my God, we have some great things going on today. And this is probably our funnest interview of the actually it is funnest funnest yes well as you know sometimes my english isn't you know very well but anyway that happens let's get to our guest please <laughs> please go right ahead okay uh special guest as well for her timing hi, hi uh my name is bella bergmark um i'm a middle blocker at university of texas at austin um i am a this is my fifth year so I'm a graduate transfer. I finished my undergrad, uh, played volleyball at UC Berkeley in California. Um, and I just moved to Austin about a month ago. And we just started practicing this week. Um, a little bit about me is I'm from California originally, been playing volleyball for a long time. I had some pretty decent statistics uh, at UC Berkeley playing within the Pac-12, which is a power five conference. and. Since then, I registered and I have my COVID year. So since then, I have transferred to um, UT Austin to finish my last two years of eligibility um, in a graduate program. So yeah, uh, ask away. I would love to answer any of your questions. I want to get into the C word and I want to know how that helped you grow. Um, the C word being COVID, um, <laughs> making you better as an athlete and as a person mentally. Okay. Okay. So COVID for me was interesting because it was kind of like, you know, I was in the Bay area in California. They had some of the longest lockdowns of anywhere in the country. So while a lot of schools around the country were able to still like Texas had a makeshift season in the fall of 2020, when we weren't even allowed to we had a makeshift season in the spring of 2021. We weren't even allowed to be here to eat in the same room with each other until summer of 2021. COVID was, it was weird. It was like, I was just me in Berkeley. I lived like 35 minutes away from home, but thankfully I was on scholarship and still able to pay my rent. So I just stayed in Berkeley. I had a few friends and we just kind of, I felt like I was on a washing machine, honestly, just like that. You don't know like what your next day is going to consist of. You're kind of just hanging out, doing your thing. And I think volleyball wise, I was disappointed not to be able to play because that was supposed to be the season that I came back from my red shirt because I red shirted fall of 2019, was supposed to come back from my red shirt in fall of 2020, wasn't able to do that. And on top of that, a lot of my friends had graduated from the Cal volleyball team in spring of 2020. And some of my friends had transferred out of the program that fall of 2020 as well. So it was kind of like this, I didn't really, I felt like I was losing a lot of friends to be honest. And I didn't know a lot of the girls coming in on the team, but I wanted to know them. I, I tried to go out of my way to make connections with them, but we couldn't be face to face with each other until 2021. And, you know, I think as a person, I really grew as well. I had some just internal conflict, like some things I was getting over with certain relationships and certain people in my life. I had to, it's a time where you really just sort of reflect on yourself. You have nothing else to do, but find something to distract yourself with and think about life, right? So that wasn't working. It was just a student whose job was to play volleyball, but I couldn't even do that. I think having a lot of solitude and forcing me to think about my situation and the relationships I had in my life at that point. Um, I had to make some changes like in myself just to just to grow up a little bit. So for that, I'm grateful for that because that was huge for me. I feel like I came back a lot more mature going in, like coming out of the pandemic as opposed to what I went into it like. I have a bit better appreciation for the people in my life for the things I get to do like playing volleyball. I'm way more grateful I get to play volleyball after coming out of the pandemic. I was able to coach volleyball and grass volleyball outside, which was lucky because that was the only way I could play volleyball. There wasn't people in Berkeley I could play with who didn't go to the beach courts. They were putting up signs saying, don't come back or you're going to get fined. You couldn't play indoors. So, but I was coaching grass volleyball, which did help me stay connected to the sport in some degree and also helps me apply how I some of the tactics that worked best for coaching me I could give to these younger girls and kind of see their growth and help me realize that I enjoy helping other people grow as well 
So I, I learned a lot about myself and I think it was really valuable for me as terrible as it was for the rest of the world. Yeah. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I've always said the people that learn the most sometimes are the coaches and the teachers. Yeah. No. I mean, I feel like I definitely became a teacher of some kind during that time period. Not a girl. A lot. All right, folks. If you've noticed, she has tape on her fingers. She just got <laughs> done with practice, you know, tough longhorn practice today. And I got to. <laughs> This is a big treat for us. I know I've said it before, but I want to say it again. I want to talk work ethic with you, okay? It sounds like you've got a pretty stringent work ethic just on yourself because you found yourself, and it looks like you've taken it to the next level because, let's be honest, Texas is a top five team in volleyball across the nation. So that just made you become that much better of an athlete for you how have you slowed the game down well first off i don't know if the people are going to hear where the tape comes from i want to explain that first because i look kind of ridiculous uh, um yeah. i want to say that i just have been i had practice this morning and was very busy i had to do recovery and i was watching film with my coaches um so i just didn't have time to take these off i got home and i opened my laptop and boom zoom so that's where the tape, it's a Texas volleyball tradition. I'm just learning this. This year is the first year, it's optional actually, but I want to give it a try because we had the first practice of double days today. But you want to know how I have slowed down the game. Like Michael Jordan talks about it. You get into a zone. A zone. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get into that zone? And that's what I think we were talking about with, or he was talking about with it slowing down and you get in that zone where the sound goes away and, and the, and the ball slows down a little bit more and you see things happen, you react to it faster because of that zone. I think for me, I'm a really like my nervous system is like going, 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 going. So especially when I am in an athletic environment and for me, for me, the game doesn't slow down. I think I become hyper aware actually of all these moving pieces around me in the game, as opposed to just, you know, when I'm at home, it's a, obviously it's a different mindset. Like the physiology of the whole thing is different. Like your like nervous system is activated, you know, you, your heart rate is going, you know, there's different things going on in your body that are just physiologically different than when you're not playing. So in that sense, it is a zone, but for me, I think yeah, I've, yeah, I've become very hyper aware and I'm very quick on my feet. I'm just a pretty explosive player all around. So my nervous system is really firing when I'm playing and I really rely on my fast reaction time in order to do my job as a middle. You have to be so fast to go pin to pin when you're blocking, to get off the net, to be able to make a move, a wrong move, and still be fast enough to recover and make an impact on the play. I have to be really aware of everything going on at one time. I have to be, be able to use my peripheral vision. I have to be able to think of like different possibilities that could happen. If this, then that multiple of those. I am not listening to the people around like outside of the court though. So in that sense, it does become a bubble. Like when I'm in the game setting, I haven't played a game for Texas yet, but you know, in Berkeley, when I'm in the game setting, I do not hear anything except what is going on directly next to me. Even if, even if the gym was like roaring with people, that's only happened a handful of times that since I had my time at Cal. Does that kind of answer your question? No, that, that is, that is a phenomenal answer it's because we've heard. Yeah, yeah, we've always heard everybody slow the game down and becoming hypersensitive. That that's absolutely amazes me hearing that. Cause I think, wow, I never would have taken that angle to be quite honest. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this too, because you you brought up the Texas thing, with the the that leads to superstitions. Oh God! So Texas, goes. your team has a superstition, right? That they you everybody's got to have the tape. Do you have some that you do before you have to play, before you go out any game? Okay. Well, one, I I don't think there's it's like a superstition. I think it actually helps give some stability against jamming your fingers. So, but there might be a pinch of superstition in there, honestly. Um, but my pregame, I think, okay, I need, obviously I need to get a good night of sleep before. I have to get a good night of sleep before. 
I was a nutritional science major, so I have to have a good big meal the night before. Have to. And ooh, let's see. The music I'm listening to really has to align with, with my energy. It changes. Sometimes I want to listen to a pump up classic rock playlist. Sometimes I want to listen to a pump up rap playlist. Uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't align with my energy, even if it's a high energy playlist, if it doesn't align with how I'm feeling, I just, I need to change it immediately. I can't, I can't stand a second of it. <laughs> so that could be my superstition. It's got to, it's got to line up with how I'm feeling. Probably. I mean, besides that, nothing really because I know it's very mental the game and I know that I control what I can control um it like happens in here and doing one thing or another is I'm not going to allow that to change what I think the result of the game is or the result of how I play to be honest um you've always played close to home family mm -hmm. in in the San Francisco Bay Area going to Texas you're away from family what what is was that hard for you to make a decision to do that? And then what do you, what do you think that's going to be like? I think the answer was no, it was not a hard decision to make because I've been close to home for so long. I knew that I wanted to get outside of the Bay area and I want to see more of the country. I want to just, I want to travel more in general. Um, I've only been out of the country once. The first time I went out of the country was last year. So um, I knew I just wanted to branch out a little bit. And I've always kind of wanted to live in Texas for the past couple of years. Ever since I got into real estate, I, you know, I always hear about the market out here. And I, part of me has always wanted to live in Texas for a little bit. And this opportunity kind of just fell in my lap. But since I've been here, I was mostly just excited to go. And I knew I didn't, I'd never been homesick before. You know, I've always been so close to home. Um, I think I'm experiencing a little bit of homesickness. I just miss being cold, if I'm being honest. It's hot here. It's really hot here. Like I can't sleep with the windows open because the coldest it gets is like 78 degrees. You know, I get out of the shower and I want to put on a sweatshirt and I just want to walk down the street, get some ice cream, and just be cozy, you know? Like that's not a that's not a thing. I cannot wear long pants here. I just miss being cold, if anything. Besides that, I love it here. And I want I hope it stays that way. I think it's inevitable like to be home for 21 years, almost 22 years. Um, and then, you know, you leave home for the first time. I'm sure I'll start to miss it more. For now, I, I'm loving it, yeah. What would you tell a young Isabella? <sighs> this is interesting because I have been in my like daily practice in order to improve my mindset and just get better every day, I have been talking to imaginary little Bella. So there's a few things I would, I would tell her. I would tell her to believe in herself more. Just know that she's capable of a lot of things that she doesn't feel like she is. One of the big realizations I had was like I, okay, and I realized playing for Texas volleyball is like in the volleyball, in the collegiate volleyball world, it's kind of a big deal. It's not as big as, you know, being on the national team or even the Olympic roster, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it, it's just pretty significant. And I felt like leading up to this point, I had a lot of self doubt. And I remember asking myself, you got this far having a lot of self doubt. Like, I wonder what you could have done or where you can do moving forward, having more self-confidence and knowing that you are capable of great things because you have this evidence now. So to little Bella, yeah, I would say just believe in yourself. Like 1% every day accumulated over time makes a massive, like a massive achievement, even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment. And even on the days where it feels like okay, I had a bad practice today or okay, I'm trying to make a new friend and they didn't seem very receptive to me today or like I'm in a new class and the material is pretty hard today. Those are, are natural and that shouldn't affect your confidence because not everyone's great at everything, but you can be great at a lot of things if you just have that self-confidence and work on it a little bit every single day.
So well, let's far. come on top that of that because cool. that was incredible. That was cool. Um, does that now lead to where you are at? Do you have bigger goals than you ever had before because of that? I think, well, I kind of have a place in my life now where I am calm. I don't have a specific track that I want to go on. Um, but I am, I have the self-confidence to know that no matter what track it is, I'm going to do great things and I'm going to do the best of my ability. And that will, like the world is so abundant that it will lead to a good result, no matter what it is. But like volleyball wise, I don't know. I think right now I, I'm just trying to be really present and enjoy this experience, like playing for Texas volleyball and just experiencing the culture here. We have 11 transfers or 11 newcomers and seven returners. So this team is brand new. Um, and there's such a collection of personalities and the coaching staff is amazing. So I just want to soak it in right now. And I think I'll maybe I'll make some volleyball goals a little bit down the road, but for now it's just be better than I was yesterday. I mean, career wise, you know, I have like my little career thing, you know, I want to go into real estate development and then, you know, have kids and figure it out after that. But um, as far as volleyball goes, yeah, I just want to be better than I was yesterday. We can see what happens after that. For you, and I kind of want to go back to the young you, okay? Mm -hmm. To today's you. You talk about building confidence. What would be the next step for the young you to gain the mindset to where you are today? If you were to take that into consideration. Honestly, it's like self-talk. It's all self-talk. It's all, like, what are you saying to yourself when you're doing well? What are you saying to yourself when you're not doing well? Because if you only rely on, it's, it's self-talk and it's also believing what you're telling yourself. If you say something to yourself enough times, you will believe it. It will become a part of what you identify with. And if you purely rely on other people's validation of your skill, of your characteristics in order to feel enough, when you're not getting that validation, it's going to be really hard for you to still have that confidence. So it would be, it, I actually practiced this when I was 12 years old, I was on a volleyball team and my coach, 12 year olds made us read a mental toughness book. Um, and in that, which I am so happy she did. She made us, she would pick out characteristics that she thought we all needed to improve on to be better players. And for me, she picked, she wanted me to be more coachable and she wanted me to be more confident. So she had us write out no cards saying like, I am confident, I am coachable. So my mom helped me and there was one note card I had in my mirror for like five years until we moved out of that house. I said, I'm powerfully confident. And I read that every single day that I looked in the mirror and it was right next to my bed. I could not get up in the morning without seeing the mirror, seeing the, seeing the note card. And I wish I had realized how powerful that was earlier. I think it helped me with my confidence a little bit, but I think it could have done it could have had a way greater impact if I had explored that idea a little bit more not just here like let's add another one here let's add another one here I have one two three four five I have six post-it notes on my wall right now all with you know affirmations things that I want to attract into my life I wish I had practiced that more as a kid because that's really valuable that is such a great message not only for the young ladies out there and the young men out there, but us adults too. Yeah. I'm, you know, I still find myself as a 12 year old boy at times, so I can relate a little close to that. But I got to be honest with you, that is pretty strong, pretty phenomenal. And man, I'm, I'm blown away right now with the mindset that you're, you've put out there for us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, in what you said, I actually kind of want to ask this question. It's been, I've been sitting here while you were answering, um, trying to figure out how to ask this question because it's something we wanted to delve into and we're going to. 
but that D1 or bust mentality and that, that uh, overcoming and mentality, but also the pressures to have to always, you know, live at this high level. Mm -hmm. um, do you have recommendations or, or what would you tell a young athlete that's coming up on how to deal with that pressure? The pressure of having to always perform at a high level? Yeah, because it, there's a lot of like, you either D1 or you're bust, right? And there's that, that pressure of having to be at that such high level and you've accomplished that. But when you were younger, you probably had a lot of those pressures and feelings as well. Yeah. And how did you handle that? Or how would you recommend being older now maybe even not to be so hard on yourself while also growing. Is there, is there something that you could share that would help the young athletes that are coming up? Yeah, I think, well, I didn't even know I wanted to play in college. And then when I realized that I could play in college, I started aggressively pursuing recruiting. I know Mochi, this is Mochi. She's just loving my attention right now. Um, and I got really in my head about which coaches were coming to watch me, which coaches were coming to watch her, you know, the coaches are here right now. I have to play really well. Um, you know, did they respond to my email? Did they did not respond to my email, stuff like that. So specifically in response, like recruiting and having the pressure of that and trying to perform. I think um, the things, so the result that everybody wants is like, okay, okay, you want to get recruited. That's goal one. Maybe you want to get recruited to a D1 school. That's goal two, goal two. But really what it takes to get there is more valuable than the end product itself. And I think for me, it worked out. But in all honesty, I think if you practice the intangibles and you get sort of the validation, give validation to yourself for practicing, being a good teammate, just trying to get better every single rep, focusing on those things less than like the end product it helps take the pressure off. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, what I realized is like every single person has a path that's, you know, unavoidable for them. It's really hard to control what that is going to be. You can't know what that's going to be, but you can control how you're responding to the environment around you, which is really, it's honestly like a really vulnerable position to be in when you're experiencing tough emotions. Like when you're experiencing shame or like you're beating yourself up because you're not playing well it's really easy to say oh well just focus on the positives when you're already positive but it really in those moments when you're feeling those tough emotions and, and the pressure and the stress those are the moments where the most growth happens and you realize that you just have to be vulnerable and allow yourself to truly just put your focus into what matters which is you know like I said just getting better being a good person to the people around you if you can focus on those things, like that's the character building part. That's where the value is, you know, which is so easy for me to say, because look at here I am, Texas volleyball, you know, but I just, I don't know. I just believe that there's so much more value in life besides the end result. You know, it sounds cliche, but you know, it really is the journey. I think that it's amazing. Being a good person at the end of the day is like worth a lot more than the end result and placing the value in those things. Because if we constantly are placing value in the end result, then how are you going to base your success also off of? You're going to base your, your success off of the end result, right? Like let's praise, let's praise giving everyone a high five after you come down the line. Like let's praise smiling after you make a mistake because you have like the humility to know that it's okay. It's just one mistake. You know how to change it for the next rep. You know, like, let's phrase those things. And I feel like that would create a less pressure environment. Probably more people would thrive. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. amazing. That was my drop. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. <laughs> I want to ask, um, I, we've never asked this and I think we should start doing it. Do it. Go, <laughs> go, go, go. Getting excited. Huh? Yeah. Um, we always go into like who your mentors and, and that kind of stuff, but more, I want to ask it this way. Who do you want to thank? I mean, like it takes a lot of people to raise someone, right? So there's, I guess, 
obviously I want to thank like my mom because she was the one who helped me write out those note cards to put on my mirror. She's the one that drove me to all those practices. She's the one that drew, woke up at four in the morning to make me lunch, take me to those tournaments where I felt the pressure. And she's the one who listened to me air out my like feelings on the drive home, you know, every single time. Um, even with her hard, stressful job of being a single mom and a firefighter. Um, this just sounds so cliche, but I'm just gonna say, because that's my heart is telling me to say this right now. I feel like not specifically, but to anyone that made my life really difficult, to anyone that hurt my confidence, to anyone that made me feel like I wasn't good enough, like I really want to thank them because. I had to figure out a way to get through that. And it made me so much better because of it. Really? <laughs> I mean, wow. right? Isn't that, so, that's where we like grow is in our toughest moments. And to those people who only place value in the end result and taught me to not think that way, it made me better because now I know what, what the, the, real, the real goal of life is at this point in my life, you know? <laughs> I love it. I love Blown it. Away. Taking away. all that negative, turning it into a positive, making you right? thrive and shoving it down their throat. Oh, sorry. I said that <laughs> out loud, didn't I? Sorry. Oh, but my. I, I mean, if you, if you think about it simply, like this, just that's kind of how it is. Like you either find a way to get through it or you let it stop you. And I don't know. I feel like there's, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And that reason is to make you a better person. So figure out how to do that. I love it. Thank you to everyone. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So, okay. <laughs> I'm going to kind of go future. Mm -hmm. You guys win the national championship. Your season's over. Still finishing up school. Yeah, I got a little cocky there, but that's okay. School's over. Europe comes to you as well as athletes unlimited volleyball comes to you mm -hmm. which way would you want to go between europe and athletes unlimited <laughs> yeah um geez that's a good question i feel like athletes unlimited is cool because you have this condensed period of time it's just really intense just environment just volleyball 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 and then in Europe, it's like you're kind of setting up a new life, an entire new country where the culture is different. Like, it, I have a few friends who are playing pro right now. Um, one of my best friends plays in Switzerland, and it was really hard for her her first year. Granted, it was COVID, and she was in a, like a really rural part of Germany. Honestly. My mind could change. My mind could change. If any recruiters or athletes in limited are watching this at any point, my mind could change. Okay. Um, I probably go Europe. Yeah. Because like I said before, like, I really want to get out of my comfort zone and I really want to explore living in a new country. I actually have quite a few friends who are from different countries that I met in Berkeley. And I just really love like the pace of life and how they find joy and, and, a lot of the smaller things in a lot of European countries. I want to experience that for a little bit, you know, on top of the volleyball. Yeah. Wow. I don't even know how, I don't yeah, want to you, end, you usually end it because it's so yeah. good. Um, but <laughs> that was such an amazing interview. I don't really want to end it, but I know we need to, cause you got to go recover. Cause that's really important. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to go. Well, thank you. I want to say thank you to you guys for, um, asking me to do this. This is a ton of fun. I love answering these questions. Well, if you have any other teammates that want to come on, we'd love to have them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure. I can throw that out there and see who wants to do something with you guys. And we, we, I really want to come out and watch you play. Yeah. Oh, please do. I heard that. Okay. I haven't, like I said, never played the Texas volleyball game yet, but I heard the games go crazy. They have thousands of fans. They fill up the stadium like almost every single game. And I, one of my, one of the, the strength trainers at Cal did his undergraduate here at Texas. And he said, oh yeah, like everybody goes to the volleyball games because they're that much fun. 
So if you're in Austin next fall and you want to come watch a game, just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys a bunch for having me. Um, I really, this has been so much fun. Yeah. Well, from us here at What Up Sports Nation, you guys have a great day and a better tomorrow.